Today we're going to talk about number lines and go a little bit deeper with our understanding. So I have a variety of fractions that I would like to put on a number line. The first thing I notice is that I do not have equal size pieces for these. Some of them are thirds, some of them are sixths, some of them are wholes. This can be challenging. In order to make your number line, what you need to do is you need to define the smallest size pieces you need. So I know when comparing thirds, sixths, and wholes, because this is really two over one, that six are going to be the smallest size pieces. Six of them will be in one whole. Once I've defined my smallest size pieces, I'm going to make a number line and I'm going to put my zero as my starting point and then I'm going to skip count by that smallest increment. So for us, we're going to skip count by six. So I'm going to say that this first dash is one six, then you would have two six, three six, and you would continue on all the way until the end of your number line, until you have enough values that you'll be able to put all of your points on that number line. Now at one point it's going to start to look a little goofy. For example, 6-6 six, six does not look like how we would normally write fractions. That's okay, just continue on. Even when you get into improper fractions like 7-6 six or 8-6, six, I want you to continue on. We'll come back later and tidy them up into numbers that look a little bit more typical. Now, once you have your number line constructed with all of your six, the next thing you want to do is you want to start to look for some of those benchmarks that we are used to. For example, your holes. I know that when I have all six out of six pieces, I will have one hole. So as I skim and scan through my number line, I can see that I have one hole right here out of six out of six pieces. If I have another six, six, so one, two, three, four, five, six, I know that 12, six is going to be my next hole, so that will be up to two. I can double check that by thinking if I have six pieces in one hole, and I have a group of six over here, and a group of six over here, so I'd have 12 total pieces, I will indeed have had two holes. Now already I'm starting to get some of these values on my number line. For example, we have one sixth right here. And I can see that I have two holes right here. Now I'm left with 7 6 and we figured out that 7 6 right here. Another name for 7 6 is one whole and an extra 1 6 because I've gotten past my whole and I have one extra piece. What I'm left with now are my thirds. To help me to define my thirds, I first need to think about where is my whole piece. So if I'm going from 0 to 1, I will have defined that as one whole piece. Now I need to take that one hole and I need to break it into three pieces. To do that, I can see that if I put these two together, these two together, and these two together, I will now have three equal pieces. One, two, three. When I've gone through two out of those three pieces, one, two, I will have reached two thirds. So this line right here, four, six, is also two thirds. I can repeat that same procedure, oops, sorry about that, two-thirds. I can repeat that same procedure for one and two-thirds. Here is one. I know that one and two-thirds is more than one, but less than two. So I'm going to look at this unit whole. I'm going to divide it into three pieces. One, two, three. Notice they have to be equal-sized pieces. Each one is worth two chunks. When I go through one whole and an extra two out of three pieces, I would be right here. So we have one and two thirds. So now I have identified where is one sixth. I've identified two thirds. I've identified one and two thirds. I've identified seven sixths and two holes. I'm left with four thirds. I really need to think about what that means. Four thirds, when visualized, would be a whole group of three, and then one extra piece of that size. Remember, the thirds are telling us the size of our pieces. Really, what that's saying is I have one whole plus an extra third. So on my number line, here is my one whole plus the extra third would be going through these two segments. This right here would be four thirds. Another way that you could have counted it would be thinking about the thirds that we have drawn. We have one third right here two-thirds right here, three-thirds right here, four-thirds right here. 
Now that I have my number line populated with my values, I can actually start to skip count between the two values. So for example, if I wanted to figure out how far it is from 1 6 to 7 6, what I need to do is I need to start looking at the pieces between 1 6 and 7 6. I don't want to look at lines, I want to look at pieces. I'm going to switch to green to help us to see that. To go from 1 6 to 7 6, counting my smallest pieces, I can see I have one piece right here, two pieces right here, three pieces right here, four pieces right here, five pieces right here, and six pieces right here. I started at 1 6, I ended when I got to 7 6. In the end, I had six pieces. Now that doesn't mean that they are six apart, that would be six holes. What I know is that I have six of the small pieces, and one of those small pieces is worth a six. So what I have is six six, because this is one six, two six, three six, four six, five six, and six six. So in between one six and seven six, we know that we have six six, or one whole. Let's try another value. Let's say we wanted to figure out how far it is from seven six to four thirds. I start at 7 6, I count up to 4 thirds. How many pieces do you see between those two values? Well, you should only see one piece, just this right here, so that is one. Now, it's not one whole apart, it's one piece. How big was that piece size? If you said a sixth, you are correct, so we have one sixth. Let's try another one. Let's say we wanted to figure out how far it is from 1 and 2 thirds and 2. Now, you may be able to see a larger piece here and define it in a certain way, but I want to stick with that pattern of looking at the smallest size pieces. If I'm counting how many small pieces there are between 1 and 2 thirds and 2, I can see that there are two pieces. Now it's not two holes apart. What are these pieces worth again? If you said that each is worth 1 6, you'd be correct. So if this is 1 6, and this is another 1 6 when I put those together, I know that 1 and 2 thirds and 2 are actually 2 6 apart. I could continue this as far apart as close together as I wanted. So in summary, when you have a number line that you're trying to put on different values, the first thing you need to do is you need to define what is the smallest chunk you need. In our case, when we looked at thirds, sixths, and wholes, we found that sixths were going to be the smallest size chunk. From there, we just skip counted up. It didn't matter how goofy it looked, we just skip counted. Once we had skip counted, we started to look at it and really analyze what some of those values meant. We found our holes, like 6 out of 6, 12 out of 6, as 1 and 2 holes. We also looked and we looked to see how we could break up some of our values into the other size pieces. We found out that if I have 6 and I want to turn them into thirds, going from 0 to 1 hole, that would mean that each 2 6 became a third. Again, you have to make sure you're emphasizing a unit hole going from 0 to 1 or from 1 to 2. To figure out how far apart different pieces were, we went back to that smallest unit fraction. And for us, that smallest unit fraction was the sixth. And we just had to count how many of those little pieces there were. And the big takeaway is, remember, it is not one apart, it is one sixth apart. It was not two apart, it was two sixth apart. It was not six apart, it was six sixth apart. Let's see what you can do. With a partner, go ahead and start your teacher's activity.